Welcome students to the new experiment. The aim of the experiment to determine the angle of minimum deviation of prism by plotting a graph between angle of incidence and angle of deviation. Apparatus required a drawing board, a white sheet of paper, four drawing pins, prism, protractor, scale, graph. So your step one, fix the white paper on the drawing board. Now draw a line parallel to the length of the paper somewhere in the middle. Now, after placing your prism, now trace the shape of the prism on the paper. After you trace the shape of the prism, draw the prism on your paper. Now, after you have drawn your prism, you have to draw a normal on this surface. Now remember, outside the prism, it will be a straight solid line, whereas inside the prism, it will be a dotted line. Fine. Now after you have drawn the normal line, now you have to mark the incident angle. Now place your protector on the normal in such a manner that can you see this zero angle or this zero line it should coincide with the normal this line this one is coinciding with the normal make sure they are on the straight line now after this you have to measure your first incident angle which will be your 35 degree so measuring your angle 0 10 20 30 after 30 this will be my 35 degree so put a dot here now after you have placed the dot now draw a line to mark your incident ray so this is your incident ray now whenever you draw your incident ray always draw the arrow in which direction your incident ray is going fine now as i've already told now place the face of the prism now remember i was using this face i was using this face so Make sure you will use this face only throughout the experiment. You should not change the face of the prism. Always use the same face. For reference, I will consider my 11 number. If 11 is in straight or it looks like 11, then this will be my face. Fine. Now, after you have placed your prism, you will place your drawing pins now please make sure you put your drawing pins somewhere at a distance of 10 millimeter or more than 10 millimeter from the prism it should not be too close to the prism and it should not be far from the prism somewhere around 10 millimeter fine now after you have put your first pin now you'll put your second pin your second drawing pin to put your drawing pin again you have to ensure a distance of 10 millimeter and how will you do this you can do that by putting a two finger this two finger will ensure the distance 
is 10 millimeter or more than 10 millimeter fine now after you have placed your drawing pin pins please make sure they are upright that means perpendicular to the plane of the paper as you can see next while placing your second pin we have to make sure it covers our first pin completely okay now as you can see my second pin my second pin is not covering my first pin so what you have to do is adjust your second pin in such a manner that it covers your first pin completely okay now what you will do is you can place your second pin in such a manner that it should cover your first pin completely and please ensure the distance of 10 millimeter and your second pin should lie on the ray now while performing this experiment please make sure you keep your one eye closed that means you can cover your left eye and ensure that your with your right eye that your second pin covers your first pin completely okay now for our next step to place our third pin what we have to do is we have to ensure that our two pins are lying on a straight line that means your first pin should cover your second pin completely they should appear as a single pin now can you see at this position my first pin is completely covering my second pin and they are appearing or they appear as a single pin now at this position I will place my third pin again please make sure you don't place your third pin too close to the prism it should be again at a distance of somewhere around 10 millimeter from your prism now look we have put our third pin in such a manner that it is covering the ray coming out of your first and your second pin completely they all lie on the straight line right now you will place your fourth pin in such a manner that it covers the ray coming out of your first second and your third pin completely fine at this point you should see only the fourth pin clear fine now after you have performed your experiments what you have to do is remove the pins but please make sure if you remove the pins you draw a circle around that point so that you don't lose your position of the pins let us suppose I have removed my first pin so this point will be my P1 now I will remove my second pin and draw a circle around this one this will be my point P2 coming to your third pin again if I remove this one draw a circle around this name this point as P3 and finally this pin remove this one draw a circle around it and this will be point P4 fine okay now after you have removed your pins now you draw a line joining these two points your pin P3 and P4 which is intersecting your incident ray at this point now note this point can you see this point should always lie inside the prism not outside the prism not on the prism 
it should lie inside the prism. Please make sure that the point of intersection between your emergent ray and your incident ray, this point should always lie inside the prism. Now, the angle made by your incident ray and the emergent ray is known as your angle of deviation and we will measure this angle. Now you will measure your angle. Now this angle is coming somewhere around 0, 10, 20, 30, 40 and 45. So how much is your angle of deviation? It is 45 degrees. Clear? So this is 45 degrees. Therefore, for the angle of incidence of 35 degree, you are getting the angle of deviation to be 45 degree. Now for your second readings, you re repeat your first step again. First, put the prism, trace the shape of the prism, draw a normal. Now for your second reading, what you will do is, instead of taking your angle of incidence 35 degree, you will increase your angle of incidence by 5 degree. So what happens 35 plus 5 equals to 40 degrees. So for the next reading, the angle of incidence will be 40 degrees. So for the angle of 35 degree, for the angle of incidence equals to 35 degree, my angle of deviation, this is my angle of deviation, it is 45 degrees. The same procedure, you will place the prism, then you will mark your incident angle, put the two pins, put the third and the fourth pin, find out your angle of deviation. You will follow the same procedures which we have done for our previous reading but only this time you will increase your angle of incidence from 35 to 40 degree now for the angle of incidence 40 degree i'm getting angle of deviation equals to 40 degree fine for your next reading what you will do is again increase the angle of incidence by 5 degrees so this time i'm taking the reading for 45 degrees and the angle of emergence i've got is 38 degrees similarly take one more reading. for the angle of incidence 50 degree i'm getting the angle of deviation 37 degree for your next reading you will again increase your angle of incidence to 55 degree. For 55 degree of angle of incidence, I am getting the angle of emergence equals to 39 degrees. Finally, and finally, for angle of incidence 60 degrees, I am getting the angle of deviation 41 degree. Note these readings, the angle of deviation will be different for different prism. You will not get the exact result which I've got. You will get different readings based on the prism you're using. Fine. For your observation. You will write down the table in your one column you will write angle of incidence i in your another column you will write angle of deviation you will note down the values for the angle of incidence 35 degree you got the angle of deviation 45 degree 
for the angle of incidence 40 degree you got the angle of deviation 40 degree for the angle of incidence 45 degree you got the angle of deviation 38 degree for the angle of incidence 50 degree you got the angle of deviation 37 degree for angle of incidence of 55 degree you got the angle of deviation 39 degrees for the angle of incidence 60 degree you got the angle of deviation 41 degree fine you will take six readings for these angle of incidence after you have written your data on the table now you will plot the graph in your graph on the x axis of the graph you will note down angle of incidence on the y axis of the graph you will note down angle of deviation after writing down the angles 35 40 45 50 55 60 you will write down the various angle of deviation after writing down the angles you will plot the values for 35 i have got 45 degree for 40 degree i have got 40 degree for 45 i have got 38 for 50 37 for 55 39 and for 60 i've got 41 degree fine now after you have plotted the points on the graph you will draw a curve It's okay if one point is outside of the curve, but note, you should get a curve which should be U in shape, like in this case, this is U in shape, fine. Now after joining the curve or after drawing the curve, now we'll plot our minimum angle of deviation. To plot our minimum angle of deviation, you will note the smallest deviation angle you got, which is 37 degree. So 37 degree is the minimum angle of deviation. Fine. So this is your graph. And in your graph, you write down your scale along x axis your 20 small divisions 20 small divisions can you see this one small box this is your one small division so here in this case we have 20 small division and this 20 small division equals to 5 degrees similarly on the y axis your 20 small divisions equals to 2 degrees fine after you have plotted your curve, you have marked your minimum angle of deviation, you will write down your scale. Hence the result, the angle of minimum deviation, you will denote it as dm, is how much? 37 degree. Fine. So that's it for today's class. If you have any confusion, please don't hesitate to ask. I will re-explain it to you again. So thank you.